Purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at Purposely.com. If you are feeling lost on the trail of life today and you're looking for breadcrumbs that will lead you back to remembering that actually you are found, that everything is okay, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Bible for Busy People. I'm Erica, your host. And last time you and I talked about how people Google what the Bible says about things. The number one thing I saw is Bible verses for when you're lonely. Second on the list was Bible verses for when you're lost. Hence today's topic. And I want to launch it with some words from one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis. He wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, but today we're going to read a little passage from his book, The World's Last Night. There are times when we can do all that a fellow creature needs, if only he will trust us. In getting a dog out of a trap, in extracting a thorn from a child's finger, the one fatal obstacle may be their distrust. We are asking them to trust us in the teeth of their sense, their imagination, and their intelligence. We ask them to believe that what is painful will relieve their pain and that what looks dangerous is their only safety. We ask them to accept apparent impossibilities, that moving the paw farther back into the trap is the way to get it out, that hurting the finger very much more will stop the finger hurting. Sometimes because of their unbelief, we can do no mighty works, but if we succeed, we do so because they have maintained their faith in us against apparently contrary evidence. C.S. Lewis gives us such a gift with these words. He gives us a hot second to swap places with God. In this scenario, we are the person helping the creature. We are the parent helping the child. And we see how sometimes God uses discomfort, even pain, to help us in life. And it's a strange position. If you are a parent or you love a child or an animal, you know what I'm talking about. I remember watching my son as they prepared him for surgery, and it was time to kiss his head and say goodbye. And I didn't want him to go into that OR, but I wanted him to get better. If you put yourself in God's shoes, you have a different perspective, don't you? And it is all about trust. I couldn't have sent my son into that OR if I didn't know and trust the surgeon. And I trust the Lord. Trust is key when you're feeling lost in life and you're looking around and you're saying, what's going on? So join me now in Proverbs chapter three, beginning in verse five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Wow, that's a powerful prescription today from God's medicine cabinet. It sums it up, right? You know the prayer that never fails? One of my other favorite authors, Jan Karen, says, it's God, your will be done because he knows what is best for us. He truly knows what you and I need, where we need to be and live and work. So I encourage you to seek him like you're doing right now, you're opening his word. You're making a space for him and trust him. Those two go hand in hand. Okay, we're going to move on to Psalm 138, verse 8 today. I love this because it's a faith declaration followed by a little prayer. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. See, the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. That is a promise in his word. But sometimes you might feel like the psalmist. Don't abandon me, Lord. You made me. He won't. I promise you he won't. If you have trusted in Jesus and you have made him the Lord of your life, he will never leave you. So even if you feel lost on the trail of life, Jesus is with you. He has packed a protein bar and one for you too. Okay, I want to invite you to join me now in Luke chapter 15. And let's start in verse one because there's another kind of lost. 
I want to talk with you about today. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. Jesus is the shepherd in the first story. Jesus is the person with the 10 silver coins that loses one in the second story. Jesus loves you. You are so precious to him. He is never going to leave you lost. In Christ, you are found. Once you were lost, but now you are found. So we began today's episode talking about that feeling of being lost in life, maybe lost in our purpose, but I wanted to wrap up our time in case you feel lost in a spiritual sense. If you feel like God could never forgive you, that's a lie. His love covers our sins. He washes us clean with the blood he shed on the cross. And all you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you for the mistakes you have made and turn away from a sinful life. Trust him, seek him, follow him, walk with him. He's walking right beside you. Good people don't get to heaven. Forgiven people do. Until next time, you are not lost. You are found and you are loved. Thank you for making time for the Bible for Busy People today. If being part of this community is a blessing to you, it's super easy to share this podcast with someone you love. We're all about spreading the hope of Jesus like butter. So if you've got a moment to write a review, boy, we'd really appreciate that. Maybe you need a little prayer today or you're ready to take that next step with God. I invite you to check out our show notes. You're going to find lots of encouragement there. This podcast is one branch on a tree called called Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose.